Uh, recently at a talk at the Wharton Business School, uh, Mr. Buffett, you indicated that you were talking about the problems of compounding large size, uh, which I appreciate and understand. But you indicated, uh, you're quoted in the local paper as saying that you're confident that if you were working with a sum closer to a million dollars, that you could compound that, that at a 50% uh, rate. For those of us who aren't saddled with the $100 billion problem, uh, could you talk about uh, what types of investments you'd be looking at and where uh, in today's market you think significant inefficiencies exist? Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I may have been very slightly misquoted, but I certainly said something to the effect that working, I, I think I, I, I talked about this group I get together every two years and how I poll that group as to what they think they could compound money at it with 100,000, a million, 100 million, a billion, and other types of sums. And I pointed out how this group of 60 or so people that I get together with every couple of years, how their expectations of return would go very rapidly down this slope. Uh, it is true. I think I, I think I can name a half a dozen people that I think could compound a uh, million dollars, or at least they could earn 50% a year on a million dollars, have that as an ex expectation, uh, if they needed it. I mean, I'd have to, they'd have to get their full attention to be working on the sum. And those people could not compound money, a hundred million or a billion, at anything remotely like that rate. I mean, there, there are little tiny areas which, if you follow what I said on the screen there, on that Adam Smith uh, interview a few years ago, if you start with A, and you go through and you just and you look at everything and you find small securities in your area of competence that you can understand the business i think you can and and occasionally find little arbitrage situations or little wrinkles here and there in the market i think working with a very small sum that there is an opportunity to earn very high returns but that that advantage disappears very rapidly as the money compounds because i uh, you know, from a million to ten million, I would say it would fall off dramatically uh, uh, in terms of the because there are there are little you, you find very very small things that that you know you can make and you're almost certain to make high returns on, but returns on, but you don't find very big things that in that category today. Uh, I'll leave to you the fun of finding them yourselves. I mean, it'd be terrible to spoil the treasure hunt. Uh, and the truth is, I don't look for them anymore. Every now, every now and then, I'll stumble into something just by accident. But, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the business of looking for that. I'm, I'm looking for things that Berkshire can put, put its money in, and, and that rules out all of that sort of thing. Uh, uh, Charlie. Well, I would agree, but I would, uh, I would also say that what we did 40 or so years ago was, in some respects more simple than what you're going to have to do. Right. We had it very easy compared to you. It can still be done, but, uh, but it's, it's harder now. You have to know more. I mean, just sifting through the manuals until you find something that's selling at two times earnings, uh, that won't work for you. It'll work, it's just you won't find any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My question is uh, directed at Mr. Buffett. Mr. Buffett, you claim uh, you can do 50% a year. If you had to start over with a small portfolio, would you still be doing buy and hold, buying quality companies at a good price? Or would you be doing arbitrage and really getting down to the nitty gritty Benjamin Graham cigar butts that you did in uh, the Buffett partnership? Yeah, if I were working with a very small sum, uh, and you should all hope I'm not. Uh, if I were working with a very small sum, I would be doing entirely, almost entirely different things than, than I do. I mean, there, there's, your universe expands. I mean, if you're looking, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of times as many of options to think about if you're, if you're investing $10,000 than if you're investing $100 billion. And obviously, if you have that many, you got all the options you got with $100 billion, except buying entire businesses, and you've got all of these other options. So you can earn very high returns with very small amounts of money, and it will always be such. I don't mean that everybody can do it, but if, if you know something about values and investments, you will find opportunities 
with small sums, and it will not be with the portfolio that Berkshire itself owns. It, it, we, can't earn, we cannot earn phenomenal returns putting $3 billion, $4 billion, $5 billion in a, in a stock. It, it won't work that way. It won't even come close to working that way. But if Charlie uh, or I were in a position of working uh, with a million dollars or $500,000 or $2 million, we would find little things here and there, and it wouldn't always be stocks, uh, where we would earn very high returns on capital. Uh, Charlie? Yeah, but it's, there's no point in our thinking about that now. <laughs> but he's thinking about it, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually a follow-up question from a question that I asked last year at the meeting. I had asked you guys, you know, what you would do with uh, small sums of money since, you know, I run a small portfolio under a million dollars. And, you know, I asked you if you'd be doing things, you know, like the net nets that Benjamin Graham used to talk about and, you know, liquidation arbitrage. You know, a lot of the things I used to do in the Buffett partnership and you acknowledged that you wouldn't be just a buy and hold investor that you basically are today. But we'd be doing a lot of those transactions. And uh, Mr. Buffett, you also talked about how a lot of the investments you would do with under a million dollars would have nothing to do with stocks and would be with other types of securities. And you didn't really don't elaborate, neither of you really elaborated any more than that. So I guess I was wondering if you could elaborate a little, more, a little bit more on how your investment strategy, you know, back then, you know, in reference to non-stock investments uh, would be different than your buy and hold strategy today. So what, what kind of stuff would you be doing? Maybe if you can give me a past example that you did in the 50s or the 60s, that would be great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, if, if I were working with small sums of money, and I would be happy doing that, um, the, it would just open up thousands of possibilities to me. And, and you might very well, certainly we've found very mispriced bonds which, where we could come nowhere near buying a position of enough size in Berkshire to make a difference, but where it would have made a difference if you were working with a million dollars. But it would be bonds, it would be, it would be stocks of both in the United States and elsewhere. We found them in Korea a few years ago that were ridiculously cheap. You know, you basically had to make very significant returns, but you couldn't put big money out in it. So it, it could be in stocks, it could be in bonds, wouldn't be in currencies uh, with small amounts. Um, but, you know, I had a friend who used to buy tax liens, you know, Tom Knapp, he's got some relatives here. And it, an enterprising person can find a lot of different ways of making money. You'll find them, most of them will be in small stocks. If you're working with small money, they'll be in small stocks or in some specialized bond situations. Wouldn't you say that, Charlie? Uh, sure. <laughs> you have mentioned that you are 85% Benjamin Graham and 15% Phil Fisher. And you have also said that if you only had $1 million today, you could generate 50% returns. Since I'm a young investor, um, this is my question for the both of you. How was your investment strategy different when you were still accumulating money as opposed to managing billions? Did you focus on specific industries, small cap, large cap, Names. et cetera? Thank <laughs> they, you. Well, managing a million dollars is an entirely different game than running Berkshire Hathaway or running some 20 or $50 billion fund of money. And uh, uh, if Charlie and I were running a million dollars now or a hundred thousand or we would be looking in some we would be looking at some probably some very small things. We would be looking for small discrepancies in certain situations and and the opportunities are out there and periodically they're extraordinary. Uh, but that's something we really don't think about anymore because our problem is handling 12 or 14 billion or whatever it might be coming in every year and uh, 
that means we have to be looking for very big deals and forget about what we used to do when we were very young. Charlie? Yeah, I'm glad I'm through with that particular problem. <laughs> he worked pretty hard at it when, when yes, we both did. Did yeah. we ever? Yeah. Yeah. We, we looked under a lot of rocks. And uh, uh, I used to make big returns on my float on my own income taxes. Between the time I got the money and I paid it to the government, I, I frequently made enough money to pay the tax. But I was working for small amounts of money and doing anomalous things. He didn't tell me how to do it, though. <laughs> okay, station 10.